Every video that you find about control and how to control an airbrush you see on the internet most likely involves practice sheets, which pretty much everybody uses just about the same practice sheets and distributes it with their own logo on it. This is not one of those videos. Dots, lines, and dagger strokes are definitely skills that you need, but you probably don't need a really cool airspace logo on some practice sheets to accomplish that even if it'd be cooler if you did. If you think you're well beyond the basics and the foundation, go ahead and click this little link right here, and it's gonna take you to some advanced freehand exercises, and if that proved too hard, well, come on back here to these foundations. Now I'm gonna talk while I'm painting just a little bit, so we're gonna learn how to do our dots, which obviously when you do your dots, you're gonna come in here. You're going to need to practice your distance and the only time you're ever gonna stop when paint is flowing is when you're making a dot. So it's easy to grab your distance there. You grab your airbrush with two hands, lightly hold down to it, pull back on the trigger. You can adjust distance using your fingers like this to give you an idea of how far you are off the surface and bring your hand in to get closer to the surface. Come in and practice your dots. Easy enough, dot, dot, and dot. So now we're gonna approach a line and it's important, just like when I showed in the last video, press down for air, keep the air on. Just keep the air on all the time. And when you get done making that line, keep the air on and make your next line. I do not want you to be starting and stopping. So when you're doing a line, you have to be moving it at all times before you start the line. So when you first start practicing lines, I don't want you trying to hit lines between start and stopping spots because I do not want you to start getting tense. So just pull your line, pull your line back, keep the air on, get used to making lines. Any old place, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter where they go. Just try to get some thicker and closer. As you get into the dagger stroke, you start out, you pull back for paint, far and slowly taper off on the needle while keeping the air on and move down like this. And you can maybe get into reverse dagger strokes, which is where you start slow and increase the pressure. Also, distance will affect how wide your spray is as well as how much you pull back. As you get more comfortable, start practicing changing the intensity. The intensity is how light or dark you make your paint. Same thing with your line. Then we want to practice increasing your speed. Speed, intensity, and distance are the three skills you want to work on. Speed is control. Working on, as you're getting more and more comfortable, start working on curve spaces at different intensities, doodling, no particular destination, just getting the motion down. As you start getting more comfortable, start doing like a dagger stroke in curved positions. If you're getting really comfortable, you can start practicing your ease with up, thin, down, thick. like that. I've collected a lot of bad habits in my life. Some of them are really, really fun, but that doesn't mean we want to create bad habits in the beginning foundations. And all the things that we're doing right now is getting you to gain that muscle memory and that control. I'm going to have a few tips on getting started at the end of the video, but before I go into that, I'm going to show you what I have been doing with my students in the next phase. Remember, this is play. 
you should make it play. I do this for a living, so some of this is work to me, but it shouldn't be work when you're first starting a new hobby. So what I've started getting people to do when they're beginning, before they go into these tedious exercises, is I've got them to start trying to do expressions, facial expressions. Because for cartoon type work to look good, it has to be smooth. And you're going to cover all of the motions that you're going to need to do cartoon type work. If you already know how to draw, you're absolutely gonna love this. If you don't know how to draw, start taking a look at cartoon faces and practicing cartoons or make up your own like I do. So keep in mind that you wanna stay loose. So when you're getting ready to make a circle, make the circle four or five times and then pull down and make your circle. If it doesn't look good, nobody cares. So if you start getting tense and you get worked up, things will go bad. I don't care if this is the best that you can do. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take your face from looking like this to make your face look like this. I started getting people to doodle like that for a couple of reasons. One, if you start doodling, if you do not know how to draw, you'll start building a foundation in learning to draw. Secondly, I found if I can keep things a little bit light and fun, people stay much more engaged. If, if you can promise me five minutes of doodling a day, most likely you're going to do a lot more. So keep in mind, some of the best airbrush artists in the world came from the t-shirt industry where all they really do is lettering and cartoon characters and simple paintings like that most of the time. And now for some tips that are going to make your first experiences with your first practices go a little bit better. Number one, strain your paints. There can always be some contaminants to get inside the bottle of your paint, especially if you're using old bottle paint, dry paint, get up in there and strain the paint. Old pantyhose work great for that or 125 micron filter that you can get for a paint strainer. And that will help keep clogs from happening. Two, mix in a separate container first. I like these medicine dose vials. I'll leave you guys a link to that as a matter of fact. That's what I do. Mix them in with separate vials. Put your reducer in there and let it set for a couple of minutes and stir it up with your reducer. It will help. And lastly, I always start people out on an absorbent surface such as a paper roll of paper or a paper towel, something along them lines and that will make the first experience go a little smoother. There are people who are going to tell you that you should practice on what you plan on painting on, but until you build up that muscle memory, that really makes no sense. Because if they really believe that, the next snowstorm, I want them to go take their car keys and give it to the nearest kid with a learner's permit and tell them to go have at it. It's not gonna turn out really well, is it? Same thing with this. We want to start out this process as smooth as possible. Anyway, guys, I'm Bill Kennedy with the Airspace. Hope you got something out of this video. We will catch you on the next one. Bye.